today is our uh, topic of uh, uh, there is a histological topic of nervous tissue so uh, learning objectives are the student should be able to know the names and functions of different types of neurons and names and functions of different types of neuroglial cells and uh, demonstrate and understand ding towards the structural differences of neuron neurons and neuroglial cells and there are some terms ganglia nuclei gray and white matters so uh, he should be uh, he or she should be able to define the terms ganglia nuclei gray and white matters so before we are going to discuss the histology you should know about the classification of nervous system nervous system structurally divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system again divides into brain and spinal cord brain parts have a fore brain mid brain and hind brain and the spinal cord again divides into uh, different segments a uh, cervical segment thoracic lumbar and sacral and coccygeal segments so after a uh, nervous system and uh, divides into also central and peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system is consists of craniospinal nerves and the visceral nervous system craniospinal nerves consists of the cranial 12 pair of cranial nerves and the 31 pair of spinal nerves so visceral nervous system it is again divides into sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system functionally the nervous system is divided into sensory division and motor division sensory division transmit information from the periphery to the cns while the motor division transmit information from the cns to the rest of body so sensory division again divide it into somatic somatic sensory and the visceral sensory somatic sensory they receive sensory information from skin fascia joints skeletal muscles and spatial senses while visceral sensory the visceral sensory they receive sensory information information from the viscera so motor division divides into somatic motor and autonomic motor somatic motor it is consists receives the voluntary nervous uh, innervates the skeletal muscles by autonomic it innervates the involuntary nervous system innervates the cardiac muscles and smooth muscle glands smooth muscles and glands so this was the functional organization or division of nervous system the nervous tissue it is com composed of two major type of cells excitable cells and non excitable cells excitable cells are neurons and non excitable cells are neuroglial cells neuroglial cells are actually supporting cells here you can see these are the neurons here these are the uh, supporting cells microglial cell astrocytes and oligodendrocytes so these are the supporting cells and this is the excitable neurons neuron basic ba neuron is a basic structural unit of nervous system it is consists of nucleus nerve fibers are dendrites axons dendrites receive signals the cell body integrates the signals and axon transmits the action potential so synaptic terminals are uh, uh, they are responsible for transmitting the signals here you can see this is the uh, neuron this is the myelinated axon here are the shorn cells in between the shorn cells there is a gap this is called as a node of renware 
and this is the axon which is covered by a myelin sheath in case of peripheral nervous system it is formed by shorn cells while in case of central nervous system this myelin sheath is formed by the oligodendrocytes this is the neuron dendrites this is the cell body nucleus of neuron you can see here the synaptic terminals of another neuron it brings the signals from another neuron here you can see uh, the dendrites they receive the signals from the synaptic terminals of another neurons here is the cell body here the signals will be integrated and action potential this is the uh, part of neuron it is called as a axon hallux it is devoid of nasal substances impulses wave of uh, depolarization starts over here so action action potential starts over here it transmits the action potential this axon transmits the action potential so here is the myelin sheath which insulates the axon which help in speedy conduction of the impulse here again are the synaptic terminals they transmit the signals to another neuron here they synapse with the dendrites neuron morphologically neuron is uh, divided or classified as a unipolar bipolar and multipolar neurons New, um, unipolar neurons as you see in this diagram here is the unipolar neuron it has a single neurite which divides into two processes one process goes to cns and other process goes to peripheral nervous system the best example of unipolar or pseudo unipolar neuron it lies in the dorsal root ganglion as you see in this diagram uh, this is the dorsal root ganglion this is the neuron which lies within the dorsal root ganglion it has a short process which divides into two process this is the central process and this one is the peripheral process so another type of neuron is the bipolar neuron bipolar neuron it possesses a elongated cell body from each end of which single neurite emerges here you can see this is the bipolar neuron it is a elongated cell body end of each of end of has a different neurite you can see here the best example of bipolar is the retinal bipolar cells and cells of sensory cochlear and vestibular ganglia all and the another is the olfactory nerve ganglia retinal bipolar cells they are present in the eye and cells of sensory cochlear and vestibular ganglia they are present in the ear and olfactory nerve ganglia they are present in the nasal mucosa so another type is the multipolar neuron they have a number of neurite you can see here in this diagram here is a cell has there in the um, unipolar and bipolar cell body doesn't have a number of neurites but in case of multipolar neuron neuron they have a single axon and multiple dendrites are arising from the cell body so best example these multipolar uh, neurons motor neurons these are present in the brain and the spinal cord so function uh, functionally neurons are classified as sensory neurons sensory neurons are also called as afferent neurons they receive sensory input and conduct impulses towards the cns motor neurons are called as efferent neurons and they conduct impulses from the cns 
and to the muscles, glands, and other neurons. The third type is the interneurons. It is the interconnectors in the CNS. They establish a communication between the two neurons that one is sensory, other is the motor, uh, motor neuron. So these are the interconnector neurons, interneurons. They establish a communication between the sensory and motor neurons. Here are the parts of neuron. It is consist of cell body, exome, and the dendrites. Here is the cell body that includes the part of neuron the, uh, that encloses the nucleus and other organelles necessary to maintain and repair the neuron. Cell body organelles are nucleus, Golgi apparatus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes. These are called as a nasal substance. Here you can see in this diagram, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here's the nucleus, nuclear membrane. Here's the nucleolus, mitochondria, rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is the Golgi apparatus. Here is the exon hallux. These are the microtubules. Another more prominent view. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These are the ribosomes, lysosomes. This is the nasal substance, Golgi apparatus. These are the microtubules, nucleus, nucleoli. These are the dendrites. So cell bodies. Uh, clusters of cell bodies within the CNS are called as a nucleoli, while the clusters of cell bodies within the PNS are called as the ganglia. So there is a difference between the nuclei and ganglia. Nucle uh, nuclei actually these are the cluster of cell bodies in the central nervous system. They are called as the nuclei, while the cluster of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system is known as ganglia. So there's an exon characteristics. It carries the information to another neuron or muscle, often relatively long. It carries information to another neuron or the muscle. It is often relatively long, single, one per neuron ends in short branch process. Here it ends in a short branch process. This is called as a telodendria. It is covered by a myelin sheath. In case of uh, myelin sheath, uh, peripheral nervous system, it, this myelin sheath is formed by the Schoen cells, while in case of central nervous system, this myelin sheath is formed by the oligodendrocytes. This uh, exon may have a collaterals. So there is a difference between the dendrites and the exon. The exon carry information towards the another neuron or muscle while these dendrites carry information towards the cell body. Here's the dendrites, they carry information towards the cell body. Usually, uh, exon is single, but these uh, dendrites are multiple. Relatively short, while the exon is relatively long. And often, they are often branched. Often they are branched and they have a receptors for the neurotransmitters and they also conduct local potentials. Neuroglial cells, nerve mean nerve glue, distinguished by their much smaller size as compared to the neurons. 
their number is uh, out number in neurons in cns by ratio 9 ratio 1 they are mainly of six types four types present in the cns and two types are present in the peripheral nervous system the cells which are present in the central nervous system are the astrocytes microglial cells oligodendrocytes and epidermal cells and two of them are in uh, found in the pns are the shown cells and the satellite cells here is the neurites here is the gray matter, white matter. Here is the spinal cord transfer uh, section of his spinal cord, which is stain and Y H and E staining. Put the H and E staining. So neuroglia of the CNS astrocytes. These are derived from neural crest cells. They are most abundant type of glial cells. Its function is to physically support the neurons and they also help in formation of the blood brain barrier. So these are the astrocytes. Astrocytes again, uh, there are two types, fibroblast, fibrocytic and the protoplasmic. Oligodendrocytes, again, you see in the, this uh, slide, these are the oligodendrocytes. They are right from the neural crest cells. Their function is in the CNS. They are help in formation of the myelin sheet in the central nervous system. So here you can see a slide which shows the microglial cells. They are right from the embryonic mesenchyme. The, in the disease process, they may transform into phagocytes within the CNS. And the, another type is the, these are the ependymal cells. Ependymal cells, they are derived from neural crest cells. They help in the circulation and absorption of the CSF. They line the ventricles of brain and central canal of spinal cord. Here is the shown cells, neuroglial cells in the peripheral nervous system. Shown cells, these cells are derived from the neural crest cells. These cells are responsible for myelination of exons or nerves in the peripheral nervous system. Here you can see again in this slide, satellite cells, they surround the nerve cell body and may aid in or help in controlling the chemical environment of neurons. Again, the summary of neuroglial cells, they are generally smaller, but out in number by five to 10 times, they comprise half of the total volume of brain and spinal cord. There are four types, astrocytes, these are actually supporting cells and help in formation of blood brain barrier. Oligodendrocytes, they form the myelin sheet in the central nervous system. And microglial cells, they are active in disease and health process of phagocytosis. And ependymal cells, they absorb and circulate the CLF, CSF. While the, there are other two types of cells which are uh, present in the peripheral nervous system. One is the Shawn cells. They are responsible for myelination of exons in the peripheral nervous system. While another is the satellite cells which surrounds the neurons to control their chemical environment. So here is another diagram which shows the ependymal cells. They line the ventricles of brain. These ventricles are uh, two lateral ventricles, third ventricle, fourth ventricle, and central canal of the spinal cord. And here again, the uh, second type is the astrocytes. They are the actually supporting cells. They help in formation of blood-brain barrier. Here's the neuron, here's the oligodendrocytes. They help in formation or myelination in the 
central nervous system. Yes, the microglial cells. Microglial cells, they are active in disease processes. They help in phagocytosis. So that was all about the histology of the nervous tissue. Thank you all. Attendance beta drop kar dein, inbox kar dein. Koi kori ho to wo bhi inbox kar dein. Regarding the topic, kindly inbox me the attendance. Thank you all.